Shalom. Apostle Tahar coming back at you with this truth, giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Raka, Kodash. And I'm going to entitle this video Examine Yourself. Go back to the desert, man. Anyway, I'm going to go to uh, the scripture. 2 Corinthians 13, verses 5, 6, and I may read 7. Let's see. <clears throat> it says, examine yourself, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own self. Know ye not your, your own self, how that Yahawashai Hamashayak is in you, except ye be reprobate. And let me look up the word reprobate. You got guy, people that come into this truth that uh, they may join Great Millstone. You know, I'm dealing with Great Millstone. You know, you have the same situation with these other camps as well. But you got guys that are... Uh, Bear with me for a minute. Let me bring this back. Okay, reprobate. Strong's G96. Adakimas. Adakimas. Adakimas from the Greek. G96. It says, not standing the test, not approved, properly use of metals and coins, that which does not prove itself such as it, such as it ought, unfit for. Oh, any man to take his hand um, from the, the, away from the prow and looking back is not fit for the kingdom. It says, unfit for, unproved. A spurious reprobate. So that's what reprobate means. From the Greek ado, adokinos, adokimos, excuse me. Let me let you hear it again. Strong's G96, adokimos. 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 Not staying in the test, not approved <clears throat> properly. Use of metals and coins. That which does, what, that which does not prove itself, such as it ought, unfit for unproved, spurious, spurious, reprobate. And Lucy, as and Lucy translated, it means a man void of understanding, void of judgment. You have a lot of guys through the years that came into this thing and fell off. And went back to into the world and just disappeared into the world. Or when they fall off, they they teach their own gospel, and their whole gospel is set on the teachers that taught them because they resisted our words. Now, what I meant by go back to the desert, man. If you Watch the movie Creed 2. I'm not going to tell you what the. No, I'm not going to go into the movie. I'm just. I'm just going to say, you got to go watch this movie. What I did was I was working. I, I uh, went to the theater, parked my car. I went by myself. You know, I went in the theater looking like a weirdo. <laughs> and when you hit hit a certain age, man, you can go. And when you're young, you know, when you're young. You go, you ain't gonna go to the movies by yourself. You're gonna go with your people or you're gonna go with your girl, right? And when you hit a certain age, you don't give a fuck. You wanna see a movie and you wanna get into that movie, you wanna analyze a movie. You don't want nobody, you don't want no friends, your your boys, your woman. You just wanna you wanna, you know, focus on that movie, man. You know? You wanna see what spirit spirituality here this here this comes, boy. 
Anyway, um, <laughs> here come, another one going to come up. Anyway, uh, the picture that you're looking at right now is from is a scene from Creed Two, and I'm like I said, I'm not gonna tell you. The, I'm not gonna tell you what the movie. Go into the movie. We know it's about boxing and all that and redemption. But uh, you know this scene right here that you're looking at right now is uh going back into the going back to the desert, uh, going, uh, uh, examining yourself, looking within yourself, beating yourself, you know, your greatest opponent is yourself, all right, anyway, um, you know, the, the, the desert, man, is a proving ground, because it's dry, it's hot, the ground is hard, there's sand, some sand is hard, some sand is soft. You know, you, you start to hallucinate when you're in the middle of the desert. And um, that that's a testing ground. So you have to go back to the desert, man. Now, let me go to this here. Let me let me go. I, what I did was I went to uh, Matthew the fourth chapter, and I'll start from the top. Matthew four verse one. Then was Yahweh Shai led up of the Spirit into the wilderness. Now, when you look up this word wilderness, the definition leads you to the word desert. To be tempted of the devil. And I'm going to go back to the first verse of Matthew 4 verse 1. And I'm going to go and key in on the word wilderness. It says, um, and then Esau got it right. When they make the movies about the Lord. And he, he was um, fasting 40 days and 40 nights. And the devil tempted him. Oh, Satan, the spiritual demon Satan tempted him. That was a test, man. And when you watch this movie, you will equate that that scene of the movie, the desert scene, with what Yahweh Shai went through, man. The testing ground. Um. Anytime Esau makes a, a, a movie, watch any movie that Esau makes on Our Lord. But he always uses the Edomite. He's always in the desert, desert in the wilderness. Okay, so was John. John was homeless. He didn't have no house that he went to. He didn't have his woman cooking, cooking him a meal. And and going into John, John the Baptist, it tells you in the scriptures that from the day he was born, the Spirit was on him. Because he, he wasn't no regular child. That's the spirit was on him. Just like the spirit was on our Lord. That's why he left his father and his mother. When he was 12 years old. Because he knew. That he must be about his father's business. Anyway. It goes on to read in the second verse. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights. He was afterward and hungered. Now. Any of you try to fast for 40 days and 40 nights, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen to you. You're going to drop dead because of the elements in the air, the, the chemtrails, the GMO, the GMO foods, uh, the, uh, all, all, the, all, all of this, all of this, I'll say nastiness that we got to deal with, man. Shit, you try to do a four-day fast, you're going to wind up you're going to wind up in the emergency room, man. When you go back 2,000 years ago, every, things were pure. So any fool that thinks he's going to fast for 40 days and 40 nights without eating anything and drinking any water, he's going to wind up dead. You're going to be in your house fasting, and you're going you're gonna to say, where's this guy at? We ain't seen him in a while. And somebody's going to go to that house, and he's going to be dead. 
You can't do it at this time. Everything is all out of order, all out of course. Thank you can and then you can thank Esau, the Edomite. Anyway, it says, and when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was after he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, which is the spiritual demon Satan, he said, If thou be the son of the most high, command these command that these stones be made bread. So yet our Lord had his wits about him. Even though he was on a he went on a forty day, forty night fast. Didn't eat no food, didn't drink no water. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Most High. Now I don't know how to read the, 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 the next verses. We already know that. If you want, you can you can go back to Matthew the fourth chapter and read from the fifth verse down. Oh, you know what, man? The Lord, I gotta, I gotta continue to read because the Lord was tempted with the fact that the spiritual demon Satan was trying to sell him out. He was giving him power over all the kingdoms on the left, on the left hand side, though. And that's in the uh, eighth verse. So you got guys, men in Israel, that get pulled to the side and they get promised riches on this side of the world. And you know what? I may go into the end of the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter. It says again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and show of him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And said unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. So these Jakes in the hip hop world and in the sports world, for them to be superstars, they gotta go through them rituals, man. They gotta get bent over. So all these guys that you think are macho men, they my motherfuckers got bent over, man. It says the ten verse, then say if you how shall I um unto him, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship Yahweh the Most High, and and him only shalt thou serve. Now, when the when the spiritual demon Satan left the Lord in the wilderness, in the desert, is when he didn't sell out. He saw he he gave he gave him the kingdom because this world is given to the prince of the powers of the air, which is the spiritual demon Satan. Like I said, you see these top entertainers and these people, these jakes that are on top of the world, the superstars in this in Esau's world. And they sh and what they show it by doing throwing up certain signs. If your eyes are open, you can see the signs that they throw up. But the average the average Jake can't see that. And when you tell them, they look at you like you're crazy. So anyway, let's go to uh the first verse, and let's look up the word wilderness to show you that the word wilderness, which is G2048, Strong's G2048, Eremas, 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 which is Greek, which means Solitary, meaning alone, lonely, desolate. And, and myself and the Apostle Gabar, and the Apostle Gabar, Gabar always speaks on this about the man of the Lord is a lonely man, a solid, a solitary man. It says, uh, that even though we get together, you know, on, on certain days or 
so-called Saturday and we speak. And the rest of the week, we about, we, we doing our own thing, man. You know, we putting up a, a videos. The, 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 the whole new spirit is, you know, brothers are putting up their own videos. They ain't calling up brother, five and six brothers. Look, brother, let's get together and do a video. Now we're doing videos on a, on a, sol, a solitary level. And that's what I, you know, gave the decree out that every man on a solitary level has to do three videos per week. And there's guys in GMS that's just not doing it, man. They really don't know what's going on. They just they just out there, man. And there's nothing that you can do to uh, make, them, make them do otherwise. Anyway, it says solitary, lonely, desolate. Uninhabited, you used of uh, places, a desert, wilderness. So wilderness means desert, deserted places, lonely regions, an uncultivated region fit for for pasture. In other words, you take a, a wilderness, and what you do is you plant seeds, and you can build it up. You know, Las Vegas was a wilderness; it was a desert. And with this guy, I was in Bugsy Malone. Uh, he had an idea to build this city, this casino out there. And it's one of the greatest casinos on the planet. It says, deprived of the aid and protection of others. So nobody was there when Yahweh was on that 40 day fast. fast in the wilderness, in the desert, especially of friends, acquaintances, kindred, or um, bereft of a flock deserted by the shepherd. A, of a woman neglected of a husband. So our husband is the Lord, and we have been neglected because we broke the laws. From whom the husband withhold himself. So we're waiting for our, our husband, spiritual husband, to come and redeem us. Now I want to go into, I may or may not go into it. Bear me for a minute. Okay, this is Second um, Timothy two verse three. Thou therefore endureth hardness, as a good soldier of Yahweh Shai. So now, when you look up the word soldier, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna look it up. I'll let you listen to it. Strong's G, 4757, Stratiotes. 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 A common soldier. A champion of the cause of Hamashayak. Let me go to the next scripture. This is a second. This is the, this is the fourth verse. 
So we just read 2 Timothy 2 verse 3, and we're gonna, now we're going to go to the fourth verse, 2 Timothy 2 verse 4. It says, No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. So when you come into this truth, you slowly get away from each other. You become a loner. And when I went to go see the movie Creed uh, 2, I went by myself. And I didn't feel strange like if people looking at me like I'm a weirdo. Now, like I said in the beginning of the video, you know, back then I would have, when I, when I was in my 20s or my 30s, I would have felt like a weirdo, man. Yeah, like people looking at you, he ain't got no girl, he ain't got no fan, he ain't got no friends, because that's how they look at you. But when, when you hit a certain age, you, you, you don't give a fuck. You do what you got to do. You don't. You don't. You're not concerned about what people think about you. It says no. It says uh, fourth verse, Second Timothy uh, two verse four. No, no man that worth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. So who made you a soldier? The Most High made you a soldier. So, you know, you gotta you gotta uh examine yourself. You gotta go back to the desert. You gotta go within yourself. And men will tell you that you're going off and you gotta do this and you gotta get back in the fold. But you gotta see that before they see it. You gotta ask yourself if you if if your first priority is to push this word. Let me go to, uh, maybe go to one more scripture. I'm sorry. That's uh, first. Okay, that's first Peter for ver four verse one. It says it's, and it says this. It says for for as much then as Yahweh shall have suffered for us in the flesh. Arm yourself likewise with the same mind. For he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin. Second verse. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men or men and women. You know, when you come into this, when you come into this truth, you slowly and then quickly leave this world you know you're by yourself when you're with somebody it, it, it may be with brothers you know you might be going out there to speak and teach like I said all of us that go our separate ways we don't call each other we, we don't talk we every few every once in a while we'll call each other about certain things but we live that solitary life we're with we're within the desert of our mind, um, it says, but to do the will of the Most High. Let me read the second verse again. That he no longer should live the rest of his, of his time in the flesh to the lust of men. Now, the lust of men, you might have always wanted to be married. You wanted to have that married wife life. You wanted to have some children. You want to have a nice house. You know, you want to sit down in your easy easy chair and watch watch the football game and your wife... You know, bring you a, 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 a something to wet your whistle and maybe to eat something. You know, you might mow the line and you look up and you say, boy, I'm living a life. I'm living my dreams. And that's what Jake is all about. That's why Jake joins the military. That's why Jake gets these jobs and move up in, in their particular corporation 
then they go bowling or they go they go they go out drinking with uh they'll have liquid lunches. <laughs> That's something that uh a passion I picked up named Michael. He was telling me he was a he was a commodity commodities uh broker and he was telling me that he get with his friends and have a liquid lunch. That means they go out to lunch and they drink. So a lot of you Jakes, you know, you ain't good with them Edomites on your job or or the corporation that you work with, you wearing the three uh, the two piece suit. You 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 got enough money where you can buy a a three, four, five thousand dollar suit and you you having liquid lunches with your Edomite buddies. Then you have Jake that joined the military and all you all you Jakes that joined the military, you gonna die over there. All you gonna be all sent pursuant to Joel second chapter, you're gonna be sent over there to the to the Middle East and you don't even know and you don't even know what's going on and you're gonna go over there to die. The most high is preparing to kill you. Cause you're gonna have that chip in you. Cause the most high is not gonna have any need need for you. Once you got that microchip in you in your right hand or in your forehead or your left hand or your butt cheek, the most high has nothing to do with you no more. He's gonna destroy you. Pursuant to uh Revelation 14, you can start the eighth verse and read down. See, every Israelite man supposed to be at the will of, of the Most High, doing the will of the Most High, but not every man is going to do it because not every man in Israel has been called and chosen. It says, For the time past of our lives may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. Meaning, the, So Israelites are living in a Gentile state of mind, therefore they are called Gentiles. Uh, like Timothy's father. Now Timothy's mother and grandmother, they were they knew that they were Israelites, and they believed in in Yahushua. But the father wasn't having it, man. He liked he liked the Roman Romanized Greek Hellenized way of living. He loved Esau, and he was probably a military man. It doesn't say, but every time I read that account. I, I, in my mind, I'm like, this guy is probably in the military. It says, when when we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, um, uh, ravel, uh, ravelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries, wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot speaking evil of you so the people that you used to go clubbing with they talking bad about you because you're not clubbing anymore you know you're not going out out like you like you used to you you like i said you're solitary you know what let me let me uh Let me just pull out a couple of words here. Let me pull up the word, pull out the word, uh, 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 re re reveling, re reveling. Okay, a, a revel, a car carousel. A nocturnal, meaning night, and riotous possession of half drunken and uh, frolicsome fellows who, after supper, parade through the streets with torches and music in honor of Bacchus. So, when you go out there clubbing, you're doing it in the name of Bacchus, or um, what's his other, other name is. Uh, uh, that's in the Apocrypha, Dionysus. So Dionysus and Bacchus is, is the same, the same person, of some uh, or some other deity, and sing and play before houses of male and female friends. Hence, use generally of feast and drinking parties that are um, pro, pro, protracted till night. 
till late at night and indulge in um, revelry. Rever, 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 reverly, reverly. It's a tongue t twisted to me. You know, you got a good job. You work hard all week for the man, and then you go and party with the with your with your 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 so called closest friends. Now I'm gonna look up the word banquet things. Pretty much says the same thing of drinking. So now you come into this truth and you no longer do what you did in the past, in your past life, meaning when you were in the world, you, you, uh, you know, People will say, well, what's wrong with this guy? And I'm going to say this here. When you come into this truth, your family, your favorite uncle, your, your nephews, your nieces, your, your grandma, your mother, your, your actual brothers, your sisters, the only family you have is really the brotherhood and your immediate family. And that means your wife and your children. You got to cut off from being around uh, your relatives. Because if they find, if they see a video of you, or if they find out what you're into, what do you think, what, what do you think they're going to do? They're going to, they're going to talk behind your back. They're going to talk about you like you in a, in a cult. When you, when you come into this truth, you're going to have to be, you're going to have to be separate, man. And the apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 7 chapter, that he 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 would that you be like unto him, that he had no woman. Uh, the apostle Paul was constantly in the work. He had a heavy job on him. He wasn't hanging out, clubbing, going to bars, being worldly. Anyway, you see the picture right there when you go see the movie Creed Two. And you see, you see that scene. You believe me. You're gonna think about that picture right there. You're gonna think about the video that I'm, that I, that, that you're watching as as I speak. You can't fake this thing, man. Let me see if I can give you one more scripture. And you got to be like. Uh, Yahweh Shai, our Lord. As soon as this thing come up. Okay, this is uh, John 4, verse 34, but I'm going to start a couple of verses above that. Okay, I'm going to start the 31st verse, and I'm going to close on this. It says, In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Because they were going in this thing. They really didn't understand this. You know when they became uh, uh, men in this truth is when, and when, is when the Lord left them. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Have any man brought him ought to eat? So they were, they were thinking carnal. When he said he had meat that you know not of, he was talking about spiritual meat. 34th verse, Yahweh Shai said unto to them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. 35th verse, Say not ye, 
there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white, ready to harvest. And he that reapeth receiveth wages. Now, what is he? What what is what what is our Lord talking about? He's talking about doing the work. But anytime they, Yahushai, our Lord, the Apostle Paul, Peter, uh, even Luke. When they, were, when they were talking about doing the work of the Lord, meaning going out there on the highways and the byways, doing the sit-downs, it, it, they, they equated it to uh, working in the field. So that's what the Lord was talking about. 36. And he that reapeth receiveth wages. So uh, the wages is what? Ultimately the kingdom. And gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that's the kingdom, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. Thirty-seven verse, and wherein is that saying true? One soweth and another reapeth. Anyway, you can read down a couple of verses down. It goes more into it, especially the 40. Matter of fact, I'm read the 38 verse. I sent you to reap that, which means go out there and do this work, whereon ye bestowed no labor. Other men labored, and ye, ha and ye are entered into their labors. So that's talking about the teachers that are over us, that they were out there teaching. And then we came in, and some of them passed on, and some of them are up in age, and they're not doing this work no more. So um, we came in in their stead, and we're pushing this work. So this is a spiritual thing. Anyway, with that, I'm going to say um, a shalom.